Hey everybody, this is John Clancy here. I thought I would just ah, drop in and say welcome back to another episode of John Clancy Q&A videos. This is Q&A video number 11. That's right. So let's answer some more questions now, shall we? Question number one. What do you think of the Sandlot movies? Well, I think the Sandlot movies are great movies. I remember seeing the first movie back in 2019, four years ago. It's about a kid named Scotty Smalls who lives with his mum and his mum's partner because his dad passed away when he was much younger and his mum wanted him to get out in the world and make new friends and eventually it happened. Scotty was approached by a boy named uh, Benny Rodri, whatever his name is, and he took him to his baseball group called the Sandlot. And they always practiced their baseball shots. And they battled against a, a rivalry baseball team as well. And while they were doing that, they one of the kids hit the ball and then it went into... And at some point, the ball ended up in an old man's backyard named Mr. Myrtle. The kids were scared of him. They thought he was grumpy and like he was going to get his dog to attack or, you know, get mad at them. But in the end, it all turned out fine. Well, the, well, the dog was actually guarding the ball himself. It all turned out fine. In the end, Mr. Myrtle seemed a nice guy. He said, why didn't you knock on the door? I would have gotten it for you. So he did, but not, well, not really, because Scotty and Benny went inside and they saw that Mr. Myrtle had played a lot of baseball himself. And he traded the dirty ball that he had in his yard for a, a nice clean baseball because he said he had a lot of other baseballs and a lot of gloves and a lot of baseball stuff. Yeah. The Sandlot is a great movie and guys, I do intend on doing a parody and a cast video one day. If you guys can flick me some ideas in the comments down below, please go ahead. I'm all ears. All eyes in this case. All right. Question number two. Who is your favorite villain in The Simpsons? It's Sideshow Bob. Sideshow Bob is one of the main villains in The Simpsons. He was a he starred on the Krusty the Clown show as a just as a sometimes a, a guest recurring. Sideshow Bob was just he was just being shot out of a cannon and having pies thrown in his face, but he didn't like it. So he decided to get rid of Krusty and be the main character in the show. So one night, he went to the Quickie Mart and robbed it of his money. And Homer was the witness, telling the police that Krusty the Clown was the robber. But Bart didn't think that Krusty was a thief, even though there was clear evidence on the TV and everywhere else. Yeah. But then, Bart realised, when he and Lisa went to investigate the case, that it wasn't Krusty, it was Sideshow Bob who framed him. Bart realised that because Krusty wore big floppy shoes, but he has small feet. And Sideshow Bob has bigger feet, and he filled Krusty's shoes with his feet. Yeah. And so, it turned out Krusty was innocent all along. And everyone, including Homer, apologised. And Krusty was grateful that Bart trusted him the whole time. And Sideshow Bob has tried to kill Bart ever since he got sent to jail. In fact, he tried to, he even tried to marry Marge's sister, Selma. And also, he, when he was in court in jail, he had some sort of a tattoo on his, on his chest saying, Die, Bart, die, but he lied about it being German or V Bart V. And so he got he got paroled. He got 
out of jail, sweet, scot free. Yeah, and he tried to kill Bart in more other episodes as well. Yeah, well, Sideshow Bob is my favourite villain, and I have used Sideshow Bob a few times in my parodies. I've used him as Amos Slade in my Fox and the Hound parody, Dennis in my SpongeBob SquarePants parody, Diesel in my Thomas and Friends parody, Stinky Pete in my Toy Story 2 parody, and one of the pirates in my Peter Pan parody. And yet to come, I'll be using him as Diesel 10 in my V3 of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Tybalt in my Romeo and Juliet parody, and Harold Atinga, I believe that's how you say his name, in my Transformers Age of Extinction parody, because they're both voiced by the same actor, Kelsey Grammer. All right, question number three. Who is your favorite character in Austin and Ali? It's Ali Dawson. Ali runs music shop with her dad. And in the first episode, she caught Austin playing the drums when in the shops there was a sign, do not play the drums, but Austin was playing it anyway. Ali whistled to get his attention. And she pointed to the sign and she also saw that Austin was playing the drums with some corn dogs. And he didn't realize that the corn dogs were dirty, but he didn't care. He still took a bite. Yeah. And Ali got devastated that Austin performed, not only performed one of her songs, but also took credit for it. She got really upset. But then she forgave Austin. And then because he was struggling with ideas for a song himself. And so Ali agreed to help him out and they became songwriting partners ever since. And I guess you could say boyfriend and girlfriend. Because mm. Austin and Ali get married in the final episode. Look, spoiler alert. Yeah. And Ali's very beautiful and attractive. She has brown hair and she's willing to help out anyone in need if there's trouble. Yeah. And I have used Ali a few times in my parodies. I've used her as Lily in my V2 Thomas and the Magic Railroad parody, Dawn in my Pokemon parody, the bookstore clerk in my Shrek the Halls parody, Emma Wiggle in my V2 of the Wiggles Wiggly Safari parody, and one of the mermaids in my Ted Pan Peter Pan parody. And yet to come, I will be using her as Emma Ross in my Bunked parody, Barbie in my Toy Story 3 parody, Princess Adder in my Bugs Life parody, and Isabella in my parody of The Royal Treatment, because they're both performed by the same actress, Laura Marano. And my second favourite character is Austin. He's handsome, he's famous, and he writes songs and performs music as well. And he hang, and Ali hang out with two other friends, Trish and Dez. And I have used Austin only twice in my parodies. I've used him as Patch in my V2 Thomas and the Ragic Railroad parody and Lockie in my V2 of the Wiggles Wiggly Safari parody. Yet to come, I'll be using him as Xander in my Bunked parody, Blick in my Bugs Life parody, Ken in my Toy Story 3 parody, and Prince Thomas in my parody of the Royal Treatment. All right, question number four. Who is your favorite car in the Dukes of Hazard? It's the General Lee. The Duke boys love the General Lee a lot. In fact, the General Lee is probably the best, like the fastest car, like to catch up to someone or the fastest car to make a clean getaway. Yeah. The Dukes, they've, been, they've used the General Lee a lot. Bo is the main driver of the General Lee, but Luke sometimes drives it on the occasion. And the thing with the General Lee is the doors are welded shut, so the Duke boys have to climb in through the windows or help someone like Roscoe or Uncle Jesse or, or Lulu, in fact, through the car windows. 
Yeah. And Roscoe, on the occasion, has impounded the General Lee, just like he wants to, he and Boss Hogg frame Bo and Luke for things they don't do. But Bo and Luke, they still get, they still get cleared of their, of the charges. Like in one episode, the Carnival of the Thrills, um, Roscoe had it impounded after he kicked a brake light out. Bo and some other dude managed to get it out of the impound. Yeah. And the thing with the General Lee is, it's been in every episode, except for the third episode, Mary Kay's baby, because she was Mary Kay was pregnant, and so she couldn't fit through the car window, so they had to use a regular car that could open the doors. Yeah. The General Lee is super fast, and I have used the General Lee a um, few times in my parodies. I've used him as the big red car in my Wiggles movie V1 parody, RC in my Toy Story parodies, and I've reused him as himself. Boone and Milo's car in my Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer parody, and himself, Barney's car in my Flintstones parody. Yet to come, I'll be using as him as himself, Bagheera's car in my Jungle Book V3 parody, and himself, Flash Gordon's car in my Flash Gordon parody. All right, question number five. Who is your favorite female character in Ted? It's Laurie Collins. Laurie was John's first on-screen girlfriend in the Ted series. And when she was introduced, well, John and Laurie had already been in a relationship for four years. And then they were planning a dinner for their fourth anniversary of being together. But Laurie didn't seem to like Ted being in the way, like John and Ted hanging out too much, because she accused John of acting like a child. You know, a man who can't sleep without his teddy bear. But John is not being a child. He's just hanging out with Ted because they've been best friends since John was a kid. And also because he's the reason he, John ever gained any confidence. Yeah. And then when Ted rang John to come to his place because Flash Gordon was there, John was hesitant at first, but then he decided because... He realized Flash Gordon is the symbol of their friendship, but then Laurie discovered John at Ted's place and she broke up with him. That was until John sang a song to Laurie at the Nora Jones hat shell. And after Donnie accidentally ripped Ted in half when he was climbing the tower after he got kidnapped. And so Laurie made a wish that her life would come back and then eventually Ted's life came back. Yeah. And John and Laurie got married in the end and then got divorced in the sequel because Mila Kunis, that's the actress who plays Laurie, she was pregnant at the time, so she couldn't do Ted 2. And initially the writers said they were going to make her deceased, but they said it was too sad. Yeah. Yeah, but Laurie is still a good, well-written character, and I have used Laurie in my parodies before. I've used her as... Herself in my Lion King 2 Simba's Pride parody, Queen Lillian in my Shrek 2, Shrek the Third, and Shrek Forever After parody, Terry Irwin in my Wiggles Wiggly Safari V1 parody, Stacy Jones in my Thomas and the Magic Railroad V1 parody, herself in my Toy Story parodies, Coach Carol in my parody of the Swap, Marin in my Pokemon the Movie 2000 parody, Diane in my Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo parody, herself in my Peter Pan parody, and Wilma in my Flintstones parody. And yet to come, I will be using her as Emily the Emerald Engine in my Thomas and Friends Hero of the Rails and Day of the Diesels V3 parody, and Miss Goldfinch in my Barney's Great Adventure parody. And my second favourite female character is Samantha Jackson. She was the replacement of Laurie in the sequel. She was Ted's lawyer after Ted was declared a person when he and Tammy wanted to adopt a baby after an argument they had in their apartment. And so Samantha was determined to get Ted his life back, 
but unfortunately they were up against a really experienced lawyer named Shep Wild, who was who was hired by Donnie's boss to make sure that Ted loses the case. And so that's how it turned out. But John and Samantha decided not to give up. They went to see Patrick Megan, the best lawyer in New York, who initially refused to take Ted's case, but then changed his mind after seeing John sacrifice his life to save Ted. But yeah, Samantha was, was very sad. And so were all Ted and Tammy Lynn. They, they said, the doctor said that John was dead, but no, he wasn't. He was just paying Ted back for being retarded three years ago. Sorry, pardon my French, I shouldn't say that word. And Samantha was devastated because she had already posted a frown, frowny face on Facebook and also said that John died. And but then she calmed down and decided to start a relationship with John. Yeah. And I've never used Samantha in my parodies before. But don't worry, I will get to it one day. I will be using her as Susan in my Gordon the Big Engine, Herbie the Love Bug TV series parody I'm doing. Question number six. What is your favourite episode in The Simpsons? Well, I've got a lot of favourite Simpsons episodes, but I do not have one in favouritism. So I will note down some of my favourite episodes. There's Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, Bart the Genius, Homer's Odyssey, There's No Disgrace Like Home, Bart the General, Moaning Lisa, Krusty Gets Busted, Bart Gets an F, Treehouse of Horror, Bart Gets Hit by a Car, Stark Raving Dad, Bart the Murderer, Saturdays of Thunder, I Married Marge, Homer Alone, Bart the Lover, Homer at the Bat, Homer the Heretic, Lisa the Beauty Queen, I Love Lisa, Kate Fear, Lady Bouvier's Lover, Radioactive Man, King Size Homer, In Marge We Trust, and there's lots more as well. All right, question number seven. Are you going to do a spoof on Planes, John Clancy? Well, I haven't thought about it yet, to be honest. I think Planes is a good movie. And I know Planes is somewhat similar to Cars, you know, because the animation is very much the same. Only it's a talk, and it's talking Planes, not Cars. But yeah, if you guys can fling me some cast ideas for Planes down below, I'd be more than happy to do them. Yeah. All right, question number eight. Have you seen the Super Mario Brothers movie? Yep, I have seen the Super Mario Brothers movie. I saw it back in April. Yeah. And it's very it's a very good movie. Mario and Luigi. Oh, mute this if you don't want to hear this. Mario and Luigi go through an underground pipe, which leads them to another world of Toad and in Princess Peach's kingdom. And so Princess Peach gets kidnapped by Bowser, who wants to marry her. And then Donkey Kong, a, a big eight, you might know. And he beats him in a fight, and then he agrees to help him on his quest to rescue Peach. And they overcame a few things which you might see in the material, like in the sources such as, like in Mario Kart, you know, Rainbow Road, well, that they did that in the movie. And they did, and Mario eating mushrooms as well, because you know how he gets big. Yeah. And of guys, I have done a cast video for the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's called the Super Xander Brothers, Super Mario Brothers movie. I've used Xander McCormick as Mario, Shaggy Rogers as Luigi, Emma Ross as Peach, Thomas the Tank Engine as Toad, Homer Simpson as Donkey Kong, Megatron as Bowser, and Starscream as whatever his name is, and then and all that, and lots more to come. The only thing about Mario is they don't have Yoshi in it, but you know. Hopefully, if they do a sequel, Yoshi will be in it. 
All right, question number nine. I know I've answered this question before, but I'll answer it again. Who is your favourite character in Bunk? It's Emma Ross. She is the main character, the main female protagonist in the series. She's performed by the beautiful Peyton List, who did Holly Hills in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Ellie in The Swap, and also Eileen in American Bogey Woman. Yeah. I don't need to go over what I've said about Emma because I did that in my two Q&A videos. I have used Emma a number of times in my parodies. I've used her as Mindy in my SpongeBob SquarePants parody, Lily in my Thomas and the Magic Railroad parody, uh, Aurora in my Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer parody, Ellie in my The Swap parody, and Dory in my Finding Nemo parody. And yet to come, I'll be using her as Hannah in my Sleepover parody, Cruz in my Cars 3 parody, Ali in my Austin and Ali, Ali parody, Sam Sparks in my Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs parody, Lady in my Thomas and the Magic Railroad V3 parody, Daphne in my Scooby-Doo parody, and Peach in my Super Mario Brothers parody. And my second favourite is Xander. He's tall, handsome, and he plays his guitar. And a girl named Hazel, who lived at camp, was fighting over Xander with Emma. Hazel's such a jerk. In fact, her auntie runs the camp. She's one of the main counselors, Gladys. But yeah, Xander and Emma make a better couple than him and Hazel, in fact. <laughs> Not that they've actually gotten together, but still, I like Emma and Xander. I have used Xander in my parodies um, four times. I've used him as Duck the Great Western Engine in my Thomas and Friends V1 parody, Henry the Green Engine in my Thomas and the Magic Railroad V2 parody, Simon in my Wiggles Wiggly Safari V2 parody, and himself, Dory's boyfriend, in my Finding Nemo parody. And yet to come, I will be using him as Flint in my Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs parody, Eagle Bones in my Aquabat Super Show parody, Austin in my Austin Alley parody, Fred in my Scooby Doo parody, and Mario in my Super Mario Brothers parody. All right, question number 10. I know I've answered this question as well before, but I'm gonna answer it again for the third time. Who is your favorite Simpsons characters? My favorite Simpsons character is Homer Simpson. He has two catchphrases, woohoo, and don't, whenever he makes a mistake. And so he is the dad of the family and he works at the power plant and I know I've said a lot about him in my two Q&A videos, and I've used Homer a lot of times in my parodies. I've used him as Mr. Arable in my Charlotte's Web parody himself, Greg's dad in my Wiggles movie V1 parody, Boomer in my Fox and the Hound parody, Rollo the Clown in my Little Engine That Could parody, Sheev in my Dukes of Hazard parody, Patrick Starr in my Spongebob parody, Gordon the Big Engine, Himself, Skippy's father in my Robin Hood parody, Van in my Cars parodies, Coach Malloy in my The Swap parody, Gerald in my South Park parody, Wheelie in my Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo parody, and Marlon in my Finding Nemo parody. And yet to come, I will be using him as George in my Jetsons parody, himself, Adder's father in my Bugs Life parody, Crash McLarson in my parody of the Aquabat Super Show, King John in my parody of the Royal Treatment, and Edward in my Ted Pan Return to Boston, Peter Pan Return to Neverland parody. Yeah, my second favourite character is Bart Simpson. I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? And he also says, hi caramba! And he has some kind of a slingshot that he uses on the occasion. And he rides his skateboard. As you see in the opening, he rides home from school after he gets detention. Yeah, and, and in the end, in the opening, I haven't mentioned this before, but when he gets home, he skateboards on top of Homer's car and then jumps back home, back, back onto the ground. Yeah, but is very cheeky and he does a lot of pranks as well. He even prank calls Mo a lot of the time as well. Yeah, and I've said, a lot of things about Bart in my other Q 
Q&A videos as well. I've used Bart a number of times in my parodies. I've used him as Avery in my Charlotte's Web parody, Greg in my Wiggles V1 parody, Timon in my Forest King, Lion King parodies, Skippy in my Robin Hood parody, Jack Malloy in my parody of the Swap, Kyle in my South Park parody, Percy the Small Engine in my Thomas and the Magic Railroad V2 parody, himself, Wheelie's son in my Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo parody, and Nemo in my Finding Nemo parody. And yet to come, I will be using him as Elroy in my Jetsons parody, Clement in my Pokemon parody, himself, Adder's brother in my Bugs Life parody, and Ravi in my Funked parody. All right, question number 11. Is Gordon the Big Engine one of your favourite Thomas and Friends characters? Well, he is one of my favourites. Yeah, Gordon is a great character. Yeah. As you guys know, Percy is my favourite in top place, and Henry, then there's Thomas, Emily, James, and Gordon. So Gordon is my sixth favourite character. Yeah. Gordon was actually the second character introduced in the series, both in the Railway series and in Thomas and Friends. Yeah. When he was introduced in the Railway series, he was boasting to Edward about how he could pull the Express and that Edward will see him rushing with the Express and it will be a splendid sight. Yeah, which is actually what was adapted into the second episode of Thomas and Friends, Edward and Gordon. Then as Gordon was rushing along, he was actually pulling a, a long train of trucks, which made him very cross. And this made him say, A goods train! A goods train! Oh, the shame of it! And Gordon got stuck on the hill because the noisy trucks were holding him back. And, well, actually, he hated trucks. So the hill he got stuck on was, was famously named Gordon's Hill. So he had engines, particularly Edward on the occasion, to push him up the hill whenever he got stuck. Yeah. But then Gordon eventually got to the top of the hill with the help of Edward, but didn't even say thank you to him. Yeah, he's never like that when Edward pushes him up the hill. Yeah. And when he was introduced in Thomas and Friends, that's the TV series, it's a bit different to the Railway series, Thomas played a trick on him, like he said, Wake up, lazy bones, why don't you work hard like me? He woke him up and Gordon decided to pay him back by waiting until Thomas um, took his coaches to the platform. And so he didn't, they, he didn't even wait for Thomas to be uncoupled. So he just, he rushed out of the station and took him all the way to the next one, just to teach Thomas a lesson for, for teasing him. Yeah. Gordon is a bit of a, a pompous hotshot. You know, he thinks he's the most important engine. Well, he is important, not gonna lie, but, he thinks he's the best. In fact, he's one of the most sensible engines after Edward, who's old and kind and wise. Yeah. And Gordon has two catchphrases in CGI. Express coming through and oh, the indignity. Yeah. Gordon is a great character and I have used Gordon a lot of times in my parodies. I've used him as Uncle in my Charlotte's Web parody, the Slob Elephant in my Jungle Book V2 parody, the Ticket Man in my Frosty the Snowman parody, Copper in my Fox and the Hound parody, Farnsworth in my Little Engine That Could parody, himself, one of Shrek's friends, Pongo in my 101 Dalmatians parody, Mr. Krabs in my SpongeBob parody, uh, Cupid in my Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer parody, himself in my Robin Hood parodies, uh, Doc Hudson in my Cars parody, Randy Marsh in my South Park parody, himself one of Dorothy's friends in my Wiggles Movie V2 parody, himself Ash's father in my Pokemon parody, Herbie the Love Bug in my Herbie the Love Bug parody, Chief Wiggum in my Simpsons parody, um, 
Ironhide in my Transformers parody and Gil in my Finding Nemo parody. And yet to come, I will be using him as Buttercup in my Toy Story 3 parody, Mr. Soil in my Bugs Life parody, and the MC Bat Commander in my parody of the Aquabat Super Show. Yeah. Alright, question number 12. This is a question I've been expecting for a long time. Who are your five favourite YouTubers? Well, you guessed this one. I'm going to say first, it's James Small, a.k.a. James Miss Prime 2798. He and I have been best mates on YouTube since, since I started. Well, a little bit after I started. And there's James the Parody Maker, Alfin the YouTuber, Aiden Green, and you know this one, my brother Ant Clancy, or... Mikey, as you might know him, Mikey Two for One BHDA. He's a pure Thomas parody maker, and he was inspired by one of another one of my favourite YouTubers, CRTC Productions. Yeah, he also does pure Thomas parodies as well. Since about ten years ago, yeah, yeah. So guys, anyway, that's all the questions I have for today. And once again, if I didn't answer your questions, don't worry too much. I will try and answer them in another Q&A video I'll do sometime in the future. Yeah. So guys, I want you to subscribe to my channel, watch my YouTube parodies, watch special video number one, my second year anniversary video, number two, my friend's 18th and 19th birthdays, number three, the mystery bus tour, and number four, the fifth year anniversary video. And guys, please stay tuned for my upcoming YouTube parody in the new year, Sleepover John Clancy. Oh, and guys, also, Happy New Year, because this is one of the last videos I've got to do before the new year. All right, guys, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in. This is John Clancy here. I'll talk to you all later. Y'all come back soon, you hear me? Goodbye. And I'm gone. And Happy New Year. <laughs>